finally, let's just have fun and play Johnny Lee. Hello. Uh, so I'm actually a researcher in uh, computer interface technology. And as researchers, something we often do is use immense resources to achieve certain goals or achieve certain capabilities. And while this is essential to the progress of science and exploring the frontier of what is possible, it does have this unfortunate situation where a, a tiny, tiny percentage of the world can actually participate in that search or even benefit from that technology. So as a researcher, something that gets me really excited about projects is when I see simple opportunities to drastically change that distribution and make technology accessible to a much wider percentage of the population. And I'm gonna show you two demos of projects that I think embody this philosophy and they do happen to use uh, the Nintendo Wii remote. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with this device, it's a $40 uh, game controller uh, for video games that is primarily advertised for its motion sensing capabilities. So you can swing a tennis racket or swing a baseball bat. Um, but what, for as a technology researcher, what I think is more interesting is the fact that in the front of each controller is actually a relatively high performing infrared camera. And these two demos are gonna show you other applications for this camera. Uh, for the first one, I have my laptop here connected to a projector and there's a little Wiimote sitting on top of it. Uh, and uh, say for example, you're in a school that doesn't have a lot of money or you're in a business, business environment and you wanna have uh, an interactive whiteboard system. Um, typically something like this costs two to 3,000 US dollars, uh, but what I'm gonna show you is how to actually make one using a Wii remote. Um, to do this, you need two things. You need uh, a little piece of hardware. Um, this is a pen that actually emits infrared light. And this is a simple device. You could probably make one yourself with a quick trip to an electronics store. All it is is a battery, a button, and an LED. And when I press the button, the LED turns on. And now using the software, uh, what it does is it reads data from the Wii remote, and when I press the button, the camera can see where the pen is, and by doing a quick calibration, I can now control the mouse cursor with my pen. So this little piece of fabric is now an interactive whiteboard. Um, here's Photoshop, so this is a simple drawing program. Hello. So you can see it actually works quite well um, for about $50 of incremental hardware. Um, let me show you this other program. Uh, the nice thing is that this controls the mouse cursor. So any, if you're a teacher, if you have any educational software you're used to using, this works with it automatically. So this is a, a physics simulation uh, software written by a graduate student in Sweden, I believe. And what it does is it interprets your mouse gestures and enters them into a physics simulation. So we can do little experiments like stack up some blocks, draw a ramp, and then create a ball. There we go. Ball, there we go. And then it'll you know, do all the right things. Uh, the other nice thing is that it's a, it's a camera, so it can actually see multiple points. So if I use two pens, there's actually a multi-touch interactive system as well, where I can grab both ends of this and use multiple hands, and it supports up to four people. Now, the nice thing is that this works, it's not gonna be quite as good as the high-end commercial systems you see on sale, but it's actually pretty good um, for the price. And the software on my website has been, is free for download if you wanna go home and try this out for yourself. Uh, since the project has been released, it's been downloaded over uh, 700,000 times, so it's already in use by students and teachers all around the world. And in fact, some teachers have taken upon themselves to turn making pens as a class project. And as a result, the students learn a little bit of uh, electronics and their school gets a few dozen electronic whiteboards. Now for the second project, I need the cameraman to come up here. And we have a Wii remote attached to the bottom of this TV, pointing outward, outwards instead of pointing toward the TV. And uh, the reason why this is interesting is that the camera can see a little unit I have on top of this camera that contains two similar infrared emitters. And those two dots give the, give the computer an approximation of the camera location. So if we move around, if the camera can move around, you see that like a video game, this looks like a 3D room, but it, for the most part, the image is pretty flat and stays bound to the surface of the TV. 
but when we turn on head tracking, here, when the camera moves, it actually gives the objects on the screen move correspondingly, and it gives a very accurate representation of depth in the space as if the objects are really there. So this has been uh, pretty startling to game developers, both hobby and professional, and hopefully we'll be able to see this type of capability in your living room sometime soon. So, yeah. But what actually, I think we can switch back to me, uh, or, <laughs> um, but what I actually find almost more interesting than either of these two projects is how most people found out about them, and that's through YouTube. Uh, service, online video services like YouTube have really changed the way a single individual can spread an idea around the world. Uh, before people knew about me, I was just a grad student with a video camera and an idea, and then but by uploading it to YouTube, within one week, a million people had seen this work. And at this point, I think the video viewing totals reached over 10 million people. And remind, remind you, that's without any marketing or advertising budget. So uh, it's pretty phenomenal, especially because these people online have started forming their own community, supporting each other, developing projects. You can see YouTube videos of people using the software um, or derivatives of this work. And while I've been fortunate enough to travel around the world to a few dozen places presenting these projects, this pales in comparison to the thousands of teachers and students who are sharing this project with their friends and their peers, magnifying the impact of this work. And I really hope that online video distribution should be embraced by the research community because in the end, sharing your idea is just as important as doing it. Thank you very much.